What is up you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is going to be an update on our Euphilia show tank. And I guess that we should probably start to call this thing the Fimbriophilia and Euphilia show tank now since most of the corals in here are hammers and frog spawn and the only Euphilia that are in here are the torches. So far, I'm enjoying this kind of theme-based tank. I think oftentimes, as reef hobbyists, we'd like to collect every kind of coral that we like, and we throw it all into one tank. And aesthetically, I think that sometimes these tanks that hard commit to a specific aesthetic really kind of separates it out from the sea of mixed reefs that are out there. If you'd like to try a tank like this, I've got a few recommendations that we'll get to in just a minute. But real quick on the update. There isn't a whole lot that has changed. We've added a couple of new colonies, we removed a couple of old colonies that weren't really all that happy, and we've kind of rearranged them slightly to space them out better for anger management because there is some aggression issues between torches and the other hammers and frog spawn. Hammers and frog spawn don't really duke it out too much with one another, but the torches is really its own thing. And eventually, as these colonies get bigger, we might have to take more drastic steps, but for now, we are able to space them out just a little bit. Okay. Real quick on the lighting recommendations. So hammers, torches, and frog spawn, they are really not the most light sensitive corals out there. Over this tank are three Orphic Atlantics, and this is massive overkill. We were just very curious about trying these lights out, and I didn't even have an idea of what I wanted to put into this tank when I got those lights. It was one of those lights that could pretty much do anything, and it was just a change of pace from the Ecotech Radians that we typically use. One of my friends, Nathan, he swears by these lights and I was like, you know what, I'm curious. I'd like to give it a go. But lights like this are absolutely not necessary to just to keep euphilia and fimbriophilia. As long as you provide a halfway decent quality of light in something around 50 to 100 par, they'll be perfectly happy. Also, they don't typically change a whole lot color-wise, so there isn't a huge benefit to trying to go completely insane on your lighting in either spectrum or in intensity. However, several varieties of this coral do fluoresce nicely, so if you're into that kind of that fireworks light show look, having a light fixture that goes deep into the blues is kind of nice. Okay, moving on to flow recommendations. I think that people typically overdo flow for euphilia and fimbriophilia. Right now, in this 250 gallon aquarium, we have a little bit of flow from the return pump and we have two small power heads. And you might even think that these are relatively undersized power heads. There is an AI Nero 5, and there is like a mid-sized CJ. That is not a ton of flow in here, yet you can see the colonies are flowing gracefully and they're not getting whipped around like you might see in systems that just have a lot more flow. These hammers, torches, and frog spawn are one of the most photogenic corals when it comes to blowing around in the water column, so you really don't have to overdo it for their sake. Also, you probably don't want to put so much flow that their flesh starts to contract and recede. A little bit less flow might make them extend even more. Real quick about water chemistry. This is something that we were slightly worried about with this tank because this is an all LPS tank and it's tied into one of our big farming systems. And that farming system is becoming more and more and more SPS dominated, specifically Acropora. And the water chemistry is being tailored 
towards that SPS end of the spectrum. So it's relatively low nutrient. I think that the nitrate is probably under 10. Phosphate is probably right around 0 0.05. We do run some activated carbon on this system. So the water is pretty stripped down. And the worry there is a lot of times these LPS corals, they like to have a little bit dirtier, muckier water conditions, a little bit better access to nutrients, and perhaps even a little bit of detritus. So far, though, I have to say that things are going well. We haven't had any massive die-offs or anything like that. I think that maybe one or two corals didn't like it so much, and it could have been for many number of reasons. If you've kept euphilia or fimbriophilia before, you might have experienced some issues with some kind of contagion. They are susceptible to these random bouts of bacterial infection, and in those situations, we like to remove that particular coral and give it a bath in either iodine or a type of potassium salt dip. Something like Reef Primer by Polyp Lab is a good example. I guess that's a good segue into the next recommendation involving feeding. Right now, I can't recommend making a big attempt to feed these guys. However, in the near future, we are going to be experimenting a little bit more, specifically with a lot of the powdered plankton. Historically, here at Tidal Gardens, we don't go out of our way to feed these guys. In the past, we've attempted to feed these corals, and despite their appearance, you would think that they would just grab everything out of the water. They are one of the most finicky LPS out there. So we really haven't found this perfect blend of foods to feed them because one of the things that we do philosophically here is if something can be fed, we try to feed the heck out of it. We've gotten great results when the coral accepts food, but Sometimes it is a matter of finding that, that mix of things that they like to eat. But if you are worried about needing to feed these things, do not worry. They will do perfectly well without any kind of direct feeding. If you guys have any questions specifically about keeping a tank like this, please let me know in the comments below. I just covered some broad overview type concepts, and I'm sure that there's a whole bunch of things that I just didn't even think about addressing. As for next steps with this system, I really think I just need to let them grow in a little bit. There is not any specimens that I'm really on the lookout for or anything like that. I think we have a pretty good variety going on in this tank. One thing that I can think of though is that there are fish in here, but you almost never see them. And I think that we need to add just a few more fish so that the ones that are in there become a little bit more socialized. Also, as a system as a whole, we're going to be trying a couple of new things. And again, this is more geared towards the, the, the farming side of things. And this tank will kind of get a tangential benefit from it all. But we're going to be installing ozone on this system. And we're also going to be installing a calcwasser dosing system. One of the issues that we have with having so much Acropora kind of tied all in is that those fast-growing SPS really draw down the calcium and alkalinity availability. So we've been running primarily a large calcium reactor and supplementing that with two-part. But it's getting to the point that the calcium reactor, even though it's a very, very large unit, it's not quite keeping up. And we're going to be giving Calcwaster a try as an additional method of calcium and alkalinity supplementation. And as a side perk, it's going to raise our pH. The pH is slightly low in these systems right now. In the greenhouse next door, no big deal because it's like a wide open air structure. But in this closed up building, even though we do have some pretty good air exchange, it's not quite enough to get our pH to where we want it. So that's another benefit that the calc might have. Okay guys, that does it from here. Until next time, happy reefing.